Hi friends, it's Monica, and let's talk about what you should read for autumn. I thought it was quite timely that the autumn equinox just passed, and I'm really excited to share a wide range of genres with you all that are good for either young adults or adult readers. Hopefully one of these books that I will be mentioning does pique your interest, and let's just get right to the first one, which is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. So this one is a YA fantasy romance, and this is the first book in a trilogy. This entire series is full of magic and mystery, and I bet you will be swept into the illusion of what is real and what is not real. Our story begins with following sisters Donatella and Scarlet. Ever since they were children, they've been both mystified by this once-a-year event known as Caraval. At Caraval, the audience is part of the show, but there is more to this performance than meets the eye. Scarlet receives her invitation to attend the show, but before the show can even start, Tella, her sister, is kidnapped by the showmaster legend, and in order to win the game, Scarlet has to find Tella as soon as possible. One of the main elements of the story is questioning about what Caraval actually is, like what is consequences of the show and why is it so mystifying or mysterious. I really enjoyed the concept of having that doubt play in the back of your mind while you're reading and trying to figure out who is real, what is not real, and all of that. It really did bring a lot of tension to the story. I particularly love the relationship and the bond that the sisters have with each other. It really helped to ground their characters more. On the romance front for Caraval, I would say that Scarlett, she meets someone named Julian and they have a slow burn romance. It felt natural and had a good progression throughout the book. And in the later books in the series, we do see Tella have her own romance story and that is a little bit more intense. But with this series, I think it's very cozy, it's very magical, it really fits into the theme of like Halloween and the nature of a fall. So I do highly recommend this one if you want something that has a little bit more romance. Next up, I have a YA gothic horror book and it is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This book is quite different from other V.E. Schwab's that I've read before and I really appreciate that she has the ability to write a wide range of books and that just makes whatever book that V.H. Schwab is going to come out next really intriguing to pick up. In Gallant, we're following Olivia Pryor who has grown up in a boarding school for most of her life. And the only piece of her past that she has is her mother's journal which contains entries of her mother descending into madness. A letter from her uncle invites Olivia to go to their family manor and when she arrives at the manor, no one really seems to know why she's there but she decides to stay. There are many secrets in Gallant and Olivia is determined to uncover them all. There is a supernatural element of ghouls that are haunting the Gallant manor and it's very fun and creepy to see what they're up to. The best part of the book for me were the journal entries from Olivia's mother and trying to decipher the meaning behind them. In the book, there are like physical journal entries such as like this, like really small text, but I really liked trying to decipher what was going on. And there's also some illustrations in this book like that. I just think the writing was very immersive and it really did fit into that gothic horror type of genre. Our protagonist Olivia is also a mute or she's unable to speak and I really think the way that she's able to express herself and displaying frustration of when people don't understand her, I thought that was very well handled by V. Schwab. For example, she would communicate using sign language or using her environment to create noise and to display her frustration. Olivia is a young teenage girl and she has been abandoned by her parents, but it's really nice to see her learn and discover that she is part of something larger than just herself. Overall, I do think Gallant is a perfect YA horror read if you're looking for something like that this fall. Next up on my list is a cozy fantasy that I have been mentioning a lot quite recently and it is Legends and Lattes by Travis Poultry. This book is what I consider slice of life which is like a realistic depiction of everyday life but with fantastical features. In Legends and Lattes, we're following a retired orc mercenary, Viv, 
and she's opening up a new cafe in a new city and she's just trying to settle down and put down some roots. I love seeing how we're following Viv through her journey of finding the best location for her cafe, constructing her cafe, experimenting with her menu based on customers' feedback, and also maybe dealing with a bit of a problem or two from her past. But I really enjoyed Legends and Lattes. It really does encompass that everyday life type of feel, a more laid back version of a high fantasy. There are other creatures that Viv meets along the way that helps her run her business. And there's also a small sprinkle of a cute romance. If you're looking for something to cozy up with, this one would be the perfect read. Last but not least, I want to talk about a adult literary fiction book and it is Beartown by Frederick Backman. This book is about a small Swedish town called Beartown and their hopes all rest on the success of their junior hockey team. The townsfolk live and breathe hockey, but once a pivotal event occurs, it affects each character that we come across. This particular author, I have read his book Anxious People and it does kind of continue in that unique writing format of his in which we see each individual's small moments into their thoughts and perspectives. I thought it really did give a greater perspective of the bigger picture of how the hockey team, coaches, parents, high school kids, and other townsfolk all contribute to the story in a small way. All the characters felt very three-dimensional and really real of their reactions and their thoughts. After reading this book, I thought there were two main parts. The first one being the intense preparation for the semi-finals of their hockey team. Then after the halfway point of the book, we see the aftermath of that semi-finals game and the after effects of that pivotal event that does affect the entire town. There is a broad exploration of loyalty, strength, bravery, community, family, and sport culture. And it really did bring a lot of emotions to the surface for many different characters. Towards the end of the book, I really did like the small hints that we get at a couple characters' futures. And this book is part of a trilogy and I just picked up the other two in the series. So the first book is Bear Town. Then I picked up book two, which is Us Against You. And then book three is The Winners. So I'm looking forward to finishing up the series and to see how everything is concluded. But overall, I thought Bear Town was quite an intense read and it also shows how the small moments in a person's life can have a huge impact. Those were all the fall books I wanted to share today and I do hope you found one or two to add to your TBR. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and also ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!